You know, here at JS2 Sense, we've done some experiments that uh, I'm not ashamed to admit that I'm pretty proud of. <laughs> but you know, none of those really compare to what I think we're gonna achieve today. MSI brings ultra-thin gaming to life with their new GS65 Stealth. The 4.9mm bezel, 144Hz 1080p panel, NVIDIA graphics and 8th gen Intel CPUs make the new GS65 Stealth a true powerhouse with a small footprint. Find out more by following the link in the description below. So it's obviously RTX season and I'm trying to think of ways to make it exciting and interesting on what is going to be probably pretty repetitive content from all of your favorite tech YouTubers. We've all got different perspectives on the cards, but you know what I've never done around here is actually taken on my own custom attempt at water blocking or water cooling, whatever you want to call it, a card that wasn't designed for it. So what we have right here is the GeForce RTX, I almost said GTX RTX, the RTX 2080 from EVGA. This is a reference PCB based on the exact you know, design that is sent over from NVIDIA. What we have right here in front of me is actually a completely disassembled 2080 Ti. So the same card, I'm just showing you this so you can see what it looked like beforehand in case you've never seen it. Massive cooler on there, which does a great job at keeping the, uh, the VRMs and the core extremely cool. We've got a heat plate right here for the VRMs, thermal pads on both sides. Here's the cooler. I mean, this thing just looks like a cruise ship. It's so damn big. And then here is the bare PCB of RTX. But you know, there's another YouTuber who does similar stuff to these custom cooling configs. Um, that being Mr. Steve from Gamers Nexus. Now, Steve has been known to take AIOs and um, do custom cooling and, and rig those up and, and very jerry-rigged just to see what happens when you get them on water. Usually leaves the PCB, or not the PCB, but the VRMs exposed with air cooling, um, which he says is perfectly fine. And I agree because the thermal limits of them or these are extremely efficient design that also cools very well by just blasting them with air. But we're gonna take things a step farther today. I am gonna be doing a custom loop. And if all goes according to plan, we will also have water-cooled VRMs by the end of this video. Now, one of the reasons I'm using the EVGA card is because I can actually retain this cooling plate, which will give me better heat dissipation from the VRMs because of all of these thermal pads. I think they've clearly learned from their lesson in the past with the uh, VRMs overheating on the um, 1080 uh, and 1080 Ti cards, but there's uh, this just is kind of a stroke of luck, I think, because when everything is in place here, and I push this down, and man, does, does that stick good. I mean, that's I'm picking it up. You can see that the actual adhesion of the thermal pads is what's holding the entire weight of the card. This right here, if you don't recall, is my like $20 water block. Actually, it was like $17 I got off Amazon. It's copper, it doesn't have an inlet or outlet, it's pretty much just a base plate with all of the high thin densities milled into it. These are the screws right here that the back plate screws into. So the back plate screws through here, through the back plate, and holds everything down against the PCB, sandwiching the cooling plate and the back plate together on the PCB. So that means that this plate is going to be mounted to the card. Now I got really lucky that this fits in here and it touches the die and is only about a millimeter off of this backing plate and all of the screws actually line up with these four inner screws to where I can mount this down to the backing plate. So I don't have to use screws passing up through the PCB. I don't have to worry about measuring and having it be tilted. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna put half of this back together. I'm gonna to put the back plate back on here and screw it all down because doing it this way also means that I get to retain all of this cooling from the back plate. Now the reason why I'm not using the screws that come with the block and have the spring load on there is they're a different diameter than the ones I'm screwing down onto right here. That would have made things just so much easier, but in the spirit of modding. And thank God EVGA actually makes this, the threading on these, these nuts like all the way through and not just partially. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to screw in from this side because this is normally designed to screw in from the back side. But this is actually starting to look entirely too professional in my opinion. Like this looks like it was almost intended for this. Now this doesn't have to be held on like super tight. We just need to keep it from moving around. So as soon as I get all four in there, then I'm gonna I'm gonna snug her up. Now the reason why I'm not using the EK water blocks or something like that is because 
this uh, plate that comes with this water block had more adjustment. So that's a big ob oblong hole instead of a, a regular round hole. So the EK water blocks was too far apart. And so it didn't allow me to actually be able to use that. And the EK water block also would have probably not fit inside the square, allowing me to still use the plate like I wanted. So this is, uh, I think we're looking okay here. I'm just gonna snug it up a tiny bit more. But look at that. So technically that's now a water-cooled core right there. And I, I think this looks pretty damn good if I don't say so myself. All right, now the other thing I really want to do here, and I uh, mentioned it at the start of this video, is I want to actively cool the VRMs. So I've got this right here. This was actually for a Gigabyte X99 motherboard, and this was the VRM cooling kit, chipset and cooling. But I've still got this block, which was never used for anything. And if you actually look at the diameter of it, it hangs over the side to where I can actually access those screw holes. So I'm thinking about trying to mount this down somehow like this, but I have to come up with some sort of a, a mounting mechanism now that can screw into those holes and hold this in place. All right, so this is actually coming together pretty well. So this is one of the reservoir mounts that come with the Singularity Computers reservoir kits, and they sent me kind of a bunch of them, and this was actually perfect. So it matches, it's gonna be my back strap right here to hold this on, and the hole spacing was actually perfect between uh, not the outermost holes or the innermost holes, the bottom hole and then the inner hole there. So it's gonna stick up a little higher on the top of the card. I'm perfectly okay with that though. That should still clear anything on the motherboard. That's my only concern now is where this hangs down, will it clear the motherboard? So I guess I should get a motherboard. Ow. Okay, this should work. Oh yeah, there's lots of room there. Normally this touches the VRMs directly on a motherboard. So it uses a thermal pad. But because we are now going metal to metal with a heat spreader here that's conducting heat through a thermal pad already, I'm hoping that there will be enough thermal co you know, conductivity by me doing it this way. And I'm gonna pre-spread it on here because I don't want it to squish out the sides. So I'm hoping we'll get enough thermal conductivity this way so that it will be beneficial. I'm also gonna be placing it right on top of where the actual VRMs are. Now, if you look carefully in here, I don't know if Phil can get in there, you can see the gray thermal pad. Although the heat will spread throughout this whole heat plate, obviously that's the only surface area I have to deal with. So I'm gonna put that directly on top of it. That way it can get a more direct path of cooling. And I'm hoping that that's gonna be enough to get the job done. Ah, ah. The suckers on there tight too, they ain't going anywhere. So here's our, remember this from one of our other tests? I don't remember which one we did. Maybe it was loop order. It was still put together. So here's what we're gonna do. You can see we got really lucky here though. The VRM cooler barely clears the motherboard right there. We got super, super lucky. So there is that. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this right now without powering on the system because if we do have any leaks, which I don't anticipate, but if we did have any leaks, I don't want this powered on, obviously. This is a 7980 XE on an X299 dark motherboard. Definitely don't want to have to deal with that. So quick disconnects to the rescue. Okay. Well, would ya look at that. All right, here we go. First boot, nothing's dripping, nothing's leaking. We're gonna hook up to our EK240 uh, radiator here with our EK pump. That's currently running. All right, fingers crossed that we get video. We need video. 92, D5, we should be getting video. Yay, woo! Let's see if any of this that mattered. Was the worst time. <laughs> now, because we're keeping the VRM cooler, we are overall seeing less voltage on here. So we're sitting at 1019 millivolts right now, or one millivolt exact, or one volt exactly. But we seem to spend more time at exactly one volt or slightly below which is getting us a better frequency right here because the VRMs are staying cooler. But what we're able to see here on some of the tests, some of the scenes inside of this test, this will go all the way up to 2100, 2115, and even bounce off 2130. All right, so there's 2130. We saw it for a minute. And the thing is we couldn't even get close to that on air. And these fans are not even running 100% right now. I've got them set to 70%. They are Vardar fans on a 240 rad, more than enough cooling for this GPU. So here's the Time Spy Extreme results. We got a 7589 graphics score. My previous best score was a 7554. So many, so many of these are rhymes, I swear. So we just gained another 35 points graphics score on Time Spy Extreme. That's a lot. 
for extreme. I'm gonna play with this a little bit more, see if we can't get to go just a little bit farther. I may or may not hook the air conditioner up to this. I don't think I'm going to. All right, so I flipped around the fans so they're pull instead of push. And we are just going to set the radiator inside of here. Okay, so the AC is hooked up to it. We are currently idling at 15 C. The cooling plate on here that's touching the VRM that my water block is attached to, this is clearly working. It is cold. It is freakishly cold to the touch. The back plate is cold. This is now a chiller unit. And yes, we are aware that condensation is the byproduct of going below ambient temperature, but we are not anywhere near far enough below ambient temperature for condensation or dew or dew point or any of that scientific mumbo jumbo to be a problem. So if this makes you uncomfortable, then don't do it. Okay, uh, clearly it's working because here we go. We got a 7,722 score. That's almost 300 points higher than the, the Paul's Hardware Gamers Nexus beef that we were all having fun with on Twitter. 8,084 total score. I think this beat Linus, but you can see we boosted all the way up to 2,190. Max temp under load 30C. <laughs> under load. Um, no idea what the VRMs are, but they're cold. Let's go ahead and compare it online. Let's see where we ended up. I might try one more test. Oh no! No! I'm, I'm eight points behind Linus. No! His graphic score was a 7,731, and mine was a 7,722. <laughs> oh, I hate you, Linus, so much. All right, one more test. Okay, so we did one more test just for the heck of it, playing with memory speed just a little bit. Max temp on this run was 29C, so that gave us a 7724 and an 8089. I'm not sure if that's better than our last score. Let's take a look. Oh, we're three. <laughs> three behind Linus. We were like eight before, now it's three. Whatever. I think it's safe to say, with the exception of Kingpin and of the little, the little friendly beef going on between Paul and Steve and I. Clearly all you need is an AC and a custom water block made by scrap parts laying around on the shelf. So, all right guys, um, Steve has probably already put up his video regarding the AIO he put on his card. Make sure you guys check that out. He's planning on doing some shunt mods, I believe. So definitely worth watching. Head on over to Gamers Nexus. Again, all of this is in good fun and why the heck not. So we're gonna go guys. Thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Don't forget. A little sneak peek too at some fall merch that's going to be dropping here very soon. New logos too. This is just my old logo, but keep an eye on the uh, merch store. All right, now we can go. All right, I'm out of here.